So the Sloth Furnace. So first of all, let's get into some of the history of this place. So the Sloth Furnace is a, a national historic landmark and it is now residing in Birmingham, Alabama. Who's from Alabama? Raise their hands. The site currently serves as an interpretive museum of industry. Kind of cool. And hosts national recognized metal arts program, like welding and other metal arts stuff. Serves also as a concert and a festival place. But before all this cool stuff happened, it has very interesting dark history to it. It operated as a pig iron producing blast furnace. So smelting iron and all that, smelting iron ore, metals, stuff like that, right? From 1882 to 1971, this place was active. Smelting, just doing a dandy old good job of smelting iron ore. One of the first industrial sites to be preserved and restored, 1981, the furnace was designated as a National Historic Landmark and it is also extremely haunted. Now, I was looking into this place and a lot of shit went down. Not just like hauntings, but when it was ran back in the day, there was a foreman there that was pretty fucking gnarly. All right, you think you've had bad bosses? This dude was next level. From skyscrapers in New York's glittering skyline to automobiles being built in Detroit, America came to rely on Birmingham and Sloss Furnace for providing materials needed to produce thousands of products. Birmingham grew to a metropolis almost overnight, earning it the nickname, the Magic City. As with all progress, a price was paid and that currency was blood. Working in this place was literally hell, all right? This was a very, very dangerous place to work. And only the poorest of workers Desperate people for employment, immigrants, would ever work in this place. They come here, they didn't care what the pay was, as long as they're making something to feed their families. Where is this going? Dark places. So they would be forced uh, to live in cramped housing units um, in this, on the sloth site, and would be called into work at any time. You know, it could be the middle of the day, it could be nighttime, they're always on call. Many of these men died horrible deaths working in this fucking blood-soaked place driven to their death by a man named Slag Wormwood. That just sounds like a villain name, doesn't it? Slag Worm Wormwood. Oh uh, yes, I am the inevitable demise, Slag Wormwood. He was the foreman of the graveyard shift, uh, where the skeleton crew, which is an excellent horror movie if you haven't seen it, uh, he ran the skeleton crew of 150 people. They would work tirelessly through the night to keep this giant furnace running, right? Feeding this very burning furnace every night. In this place, you know, this furnace was painfully hot. The temperature there without humidity could be around 100 degrees Fahrenheit just during the day. Add in 20 to 30% humidity and you're, you're, you're sweating, your skin's peeling off your bones pretty much. That's what it probably feels like, right? Or you add the temperature of the blast furnace where the temperatures could reach 4,000 degrees. Right now, these uh, blast furnaces had to be hot enough to melt iron. And the temperatures around the furnace themselves, but before the days of AC, would actually reach up from 120 to 150 degrees, or just around that. Now, just imagine that extreme heat, all right? No AC, and you're working in this place. Hard manual labor. Fucking coal and chucking shit and pushing shit, right? No wonder so many people died at this place. So these levels are skin-melting levels, okay? You know, people would be working in this place and they would they would lose uh, so much sweat, they'd get dizzy and they'd pass out just because of the intense heat of this place. The temperatures, the rough man in labor made it a living, literally a living hell. So if you want to know what hell's like, just imagine you're working in this place. So these employers who worked would be brutally exploited by their bosses because, you know, these people, they need a job. They need to feed their families. They need to make a living. You know, they're immigrants from another country coming to America. And the boss is saying, if you don't work here, we're deporting your ass back. All right? So you better work. They do anything just to get these people to keep this uh, this place running. And back then, I guess even now, you know, you do anything for your family. Make sure they have the best life, right? James Slag Wormwood was his full name. He was super eager to impress his supervisors. He would make his workers take dangerous risks, forcing them to speed up production during his reign, all right? Make them work overtime, make them not eat anything, all right? Hey, you're not allowed to work if you're on my shift. Now, as the foreman of the skeleton crew, Slagworm Wood, um, during his reign, 47 workers 
lost their lives over this time period. That's 10 times more than any shift in the history of the furnace. 47 people. That's a lot of people to lose as a foreman at, at, a, at, a, at a work site. Now, those are just the deaths. Countless others lost their ability to work due to accidents, mishaps around the, um, the furnace, and even recorded explosions. So in the small blowing engine house in 1888, it left six workers burned, blinded. So where explosion happened and the heat from the explosion literally seared their eyeballs to where they are blind. They were blind in both eyes. The name like that, I think, is mandatory. He has a monocle cane top hat. Uh, he could have. I feel like he would have, right? He's in Alabama back then. He's like the foreman. He's like, ah, uh, production, money. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, there is no thought to their safety. Safety was the last thing back then. As long as I could speed up production, make more money, he did not care what he had to do. So when working for Wormwood, there was never any breaks. The only feeding you would do was feeding the furnace to keep it going, to melt the metal, and to have production at high to keep it running through the night. And if you were to die during that time, get injured, Tua! He spit on you. He kicked you out. You're worthless. You're nothing. You can't work. You're fired. Too bad. All right. No EI. No work been compensation. Nothing. Die on the job. Right. <laughs> You're just laying there dead. <sighs> I see you can't work anymore, Jimmy. You're fired. <laughs> so let's jump into the tale of ghost wormwood so what happened to this wormwood fellow all right slag wormwood is his name the foreman of the night crew the skeleton crew um he was the definition of a terrible boss you think he had a terrible boss this dude was next level okay but don't worry this dude got what was coming to him did he get what he deserved yes yes so let's set the scene we're setting the scene now all right it's hot it's 120 degrees in the slag furnace all right People are working, slagging coal, slagging iron, all that shit, right? P pushing giant steel barrels of bullshit because, man, they hate their lives as much. It's October 1906. James Slag Wormwood was on the night crew. He's overseeing things. And now, uh, for some reason, he was at the highest point of the blast furnace, right? High above Big Alice. So they called Big Alice the, uh, the big blast furnace. It was a nickname for it, Big Alice, all right? He was at the top doing something up there when uh, he lost his footing on Big Alice. He plummeted all the way down. All right, he fell, he plummeted all the way down into a pool of melted iron ore. His body instantly melted as it hit the iron, the melted iron, just disintegrated. Now, when something like that happens, the shock of that would pretty much kill it instantly, though his body became infused with the metal. It's kind of how funny that he died in the same furnace where he pushed so many others to die. 47 people. All right. Now, rumors started to spread around the furnace saying, did he, what was he doing up there? All right. Because he never went up there in his, all of his years of being a foreman, right? Now, there's a couple things here. Some reports may have thought that he may have became dizzy from the methane gas that was being produced from the furnace, right? He was up there, the gas was coming up, he felt dizzy, kind of blacked out, lost his footing and fell into the melted, melting, uh, melted iron, right? Body just disintegrating. Other rumors started to circle that the workers there got really fed up with his bullshit and actually took him to the top of Big Alice and dropped him into the melted iron, all right? Feeding him to the furnace like he did to so many other people. No one was brought up on charges. There's no evidence of foul play like this. So it's all speculation of what really happened. Now, soon after his death, paranormal sightings began to appear on the graveyard shift. Uh, Sloss Industries soon to discontinue the graveyard shift, citing numerous reports of accidents and strange incidences that started to happen and it started to decrease steel production. I too have been known to make enough methane gas to make people pass out. Oh, really? No. <laughs> Soon after his death, the weird paranormal shit started to happen all around Sloss Furnace, okay? As more settings and weird things started to happen, the legend of slag wormswood grew within the confines more and more each year, injecting fear into all who worked the Sloss Furnace. Usually it was on the night crew, the skeleton crew, right? Workers complained of unnatural presence, that they increasingly encountered at the worksite. 
Now, I don't know if you ever worked in a haunted place, but it can be kind of creepy. Uh, I can only imagine working in a furnace like this, right? Maybe it was really hot and people started like get woozy or start to see things that aren't there. Over the years, many incidences started to happen at this furnace. So let's go back to 1926. I know we keep going back because that's when shit happened. A night watchman sustained injuries after being pushed from behind uh, and told angrily, angrily by a deep voice. Get back to work. The voice boomed behind him. You know, after the man turned around, looked up, no one was there. Who pushed him? He can find no signs of anyone who pushed him. No signs of anyone with that booming voice. Now, the injuries he re he suffered were pretty minor. Nothing crazy, you know. No missing thumbs or limbs or anything like that. It was kind of weird, right? That was one of the first incidences. Let's go forward a little bit to... 1947. The year of, I don't know, 1947 is just a weird year, all right? Three supervisors ended up turning up missing. These three supervisors they found unconscious and locked in a small boiler room in the southern eastern part of the plant. None of the three could explain exactly what happened to them. You know, they're a little disoriented. Um, all agreed that they were approached by a man whose skin appeared badly burned and who angrily shouted at them, to push some steel. They felt faint, they blacked out. Next thing you know, the three supervisors were tied up and locked inside this uh, weird small boiler room. Now they never um, saw the guy again. They couldn't describe what he looked like because he was so burnt up and disfigured. All right, definitely creepy. Now I'd imagine if that happened to me, I'd be like, hey, uh, I quit. Probably the most horrifying tale occurred in 1971. Ah, oh, yes. You remember that year, don't you? That was the year that the, the baseball team won the World, World Series, right? That was a really good year. Uh, Twas the night before the plant closed. Okay. Samuel Blumenthal, the sloth, sloth night watchman, who was nostalgically uh, taking a last look about because the plant was about to close. He's like, I'm going to miss this place. It's my last day. It's 1971, so I got to get home to my lady friend so she can cook me a pot pie. Samuel's looking around, he's just taking it all in. He's like, man, or maybe he's like, fuck this place. As he was looking around, taking it all in, he found himself face to face with the most frightening thing he had ever seen, he said. He described it simply as evil, a half man, half demon who tried to push him up the stairs, when Samuel refused, the monster began to beat him with his fists until he was unconscious. Upon examination by Dr. Jack Barlow, Samuel was found beaten and covered in severe burns. Burns that, we, that you would get from working in this place, but second to third degree burns, right? He died before ever returned to Sloss. So in this place, there has been over more than 100 reports of suspected paranormal activity at Sloss Furnaces. 100, that's a lot. From minor incidences such as, you know, steam whistles uh, apparently blowing by themselves to major sightings and the rare physical assault at this place. It is interesting to note that the majority of these reports uh, happen in the months of September and October at night during the old graveyard shift, yes. Uh, some merely dismiss the occurrences uh, as Halloween hoaxes. Others believe it is re uh, restless spirits of the sadistic foreman, Mr. Slag, roaming around. So in 1988, a study was conducted by the Center of Paranormal Events in St. Petersburg, Florida on sloth furnaces. You know, while no events out of the ordinary occurred during the study, it may many of the team members, including two psychics, claim that due to the violent disagreement for all of life, violent disregard for and loss of life, Sloth's furnace should be considered a location rife with restless souls. In the year 2000, Sloss was studied once again by uh, the paranormal team of Fox's scariest places, who concluded this, that it was one of the highest uh, rates of unnatural energy they had encountered. A skeptical investigation from the CBS affiliate WJTV investigated the site they left frazzled, and they were convinced that Sloss was haunted, capturing amazing footage 
that can actually be seen on their website. Now, in addition, another investigation was held in back in 2003. Uh, I was around 33 years old at this time. Uh, by the Alabama Foundation of Paranormal Research. That's a real thing. Who quoted this? There is no doubt Sloss is a hot spot for paranormal activity. During our investigations, we pulled data that confirms through our scientific methods and approach that energies are present that cannot be explained. Sloss is one of the most paranormally active places our team has ever investigated. October 4th, 2003. Another assault happened to one of the crew members, Josh Thomas, who had worked at Sloss for many years, suddenly caught fire after seeing a strange shape. He caught fire. The dude caught fire. He suffered burns up and down his body and was taken to the hospital. He still cannot recall what happened. Mind your own business, and all of a sudden you light on fire. Spontaneous combustion, maybe? This was almost on the exact... 32nd anniversary of Samuel Blumenthal, the guy who died from his birds, a burn attack, the night watchman from 1971. So 2005 rolls around. I know there's a lot of stuff happening in this place. Two psychic investigators from the TV show Airline investigate a sloss furnace. In the middle of taping, one of them began to spontaneously bleed from a cut that appeared in his right hand, halting the investigation. But not before the camera crew caught images of spirits on their cameras. Can you imagine it's like recording all of a sudden fucking slice and you just start to gush blood everywhere. 2009, unexplained mysteries also investigated. Team investigated Sloss and were shocked to capture spiritual shadows on film. 2012, the team from Ghost Adventurers, yes, the very same, visited and were physically assaulted again. It was caught on camera. 2014, tapes, ghost hunters, visited Sloth Furnace, and filmed absolutely phenomenal footage, proving that there is definitive spiritual activity at Sloth, and have since returned to capture even more evidence. The Sloth Furnace team continues to archive these sightings, both from the press as well as individuals that visit this place. Uh, I would never set foot in Alabama because I am scared to get shot. <laughs> 